Bawat isa sa atin ay mayroong tinatawag na lifeline. Let's imagine that this is you, you are 30 years old right now at the beginning of your career, and you have 30 to 35 years of work life depending on how old you want to retire. Kung 60 years old ka magre-retire, you have around 20, 25 years or more to enjoy your retirement life. At aminin natin, lahat naman tayo gustong magkaroon ng comfortable and happy retirement. You live in your dream house, driving your dream car, traveling to places, and enjoying time with your children and grandchildren without worrying about money or outliving your own money. Until you rest in peace or when God calls you home. Between now and the day you retire, marami pang pwedeng mangyari. You might buy your first house and first car. If you have children, you have to save up for their educational fund and you also need to start saving for your retirement fund and estate planning. Aside from these big goals, you may also have other goals and aspirations like travel with your family, have your dream wedding or fund your children's wedding, or give a significant donation to your favorite charity. We may have different goals and dreams, but for sure, we want to achieve some of these things in our life. And that is one of the reasons why you and I work so hard to hopefully achieve these goals. But the question is, is there a guarantee that you will travel from where you are right now to where you want to be or until you retire without having any humps and bumps along the way? Only God knows about our life at walang sino mang makakapagsabi kung ano ang pwedeng mangyari as we pursue our dreams and goals in life. Praise God if we travel from this point to this point smoothly without any major problems or circumstances. But let's face it, life happens, things may not go as planned or expected. Your life can be cut at any point through an untimely death, or through a disability, or a critical illness. A critical illness means an illness, sickness, or a disease, or a corrective measure which may not cause death immediately, but something that may not allow you to work temporarily or permanently. Kagaya ng stroke, heart attack, cancer, or a major organ transplant. Sabi nga nang narinig ko before, everyone in the world has got two dates to worry about. DOB and DOD, date of birth and date of death. All of us know our date of birth, but no one knows our date of death. However, in between this, you are given the opportunity to live or to have this thing called life. Depending on our circumstances, life can be long and full of events. And life is also full of ifs. What if something happens to you? An untimely death, for example. Sino ang mag-aalaga sa pamilya mo? Paano ang pag-aaral ng mga anak mo? Sino ang magpapatuloy ng mga pangarap nyo? Kaya dapat, huwag nating babaliwalain ang pagkakaroon ng health and life insurance dahil ito ang sasalo sa atin sakaling may mangyaring hindi inaasahan. Our plan A consists of our goals, life plans, and the work we do in order to achieve them. But it's also very important that we have a plan B in case some things don't go as planned. Masarap pangarap, pero alam natin na hindi ito madali. Marami tayong pwedeng pagdaan ng challenges along the way. Isa na rito ay yung ating sweldo. Ang dami nating mga pangarap, pero karamihan sa atin, isa lang ang source of income. Gusto mong magpatayo ng sariling bahay, bumili ng sariling sasakyan, pag-arali ng mga anak sa magandang school, paghandaan ng retirement, mag-travel kasama ang pamilya at marami pang iba. You can make a list of your goals based on your core values and priorities. Nasa iyo yan at ikaw lang ang nakakaalam kung alin ang uunahin mo. Pero hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na magpapagawa ko ng malaking malaking bahay dahil ito ang ultimate dream ko at bahala na kung hindi makapag-aral ang mga anak ko. Or you can say, I will work hard and save money so that I can send my children to the best school and I don't care about my retirement because my children will take care of me anyway. That may be possible for some. In fact, many Filipinos think this way. But we must remember that our children are not our retirement fund. Our children have their own lifelines too. 
Just like us, they too have their own goals and dreams. May mga pangarap din sila. And just like everybody else, they may also encounter some humps and bumps on the road as they pursue their goals. At kagaya ng napag-usapan natin kanina, life is full of ifs. What if something happens to them? Sino ang mag-aalaga sa'yo during your retirement years? Sending our kids to the best school is every parent's dream, but it does not guarantee a comfortable retirement life for the parents. Hindi mo rin pwedeng sabihin na dibali na yung ibang goals ko, basta bibili na lang ako ng malaking insurance coverage para pag may nangyari sa akin, si insurance na ang bahala sa pamilya ko. Parang hindi naman yata tama, ba? Diba? As much as possible, gusto natin na matupad ang ating mga pangarap without compromising the other goals. So how can we achieve this? This is where the process of financial planning comes to your rescue. At ito ang susubukan kong ipaliwanag sa iyo ngayon using this analogy na tatawagin nating building your financial home. Disclaimer lang po, I'm not an architect or an engineer at hindi ko po kabisado ang pag-construct ng totoong bahay o building. Pero susubukan ko pong ipaliwanag kung paano ipibuild ang ating financial home na kagaya ng pag-build ng ating real house. So what does your financial home look like? To make it simple, ito ay may foundation, walls, ceiling, at roof. Laying the foundation is the first step in building a house. And it's the same thing when we build our financial home. Pero dito, ang pinaka-foundation natin ay ang insurance para sa protection ng owner. May tatlong layers ang foundation. The first layer is the life insurance. The second layer is the critical illness insurance. And the third layer is the health insurance or HMO or health coverage. Building a good and solid foundation is the first thing that we should consider when we start financial planning. At kagaya ng pagpapatayo ng bahay, the foundation goes under the soil. It does not require a great deal of decoration, but we need to calculate the strength of the foundation. Yung tibay ng foundation, nakadepende yan sa laki ng bahay, kung ilang floors o stories, and the number of rooms and people who will live in that house. The bigger the house, the stronger the foundation should be. At pareho din yan pagdating sa foundation ng iyong financial home. Kung ikaw ang breadwinner, maraming umaasa sa'yo at marami kang financial goals, the bigger your life and health insurance coverage should be. Siguro sasabihin mo, ang dami namang insurance, pwede bang life insurance na lang? Pwede naman, kasi kung may nangyari sa'yo, may maiiwan ka sa pamilya mo through your life insurance benefits. Pero paano kung nagkaroon ka ng malubhang sakit, kagaya ng stroke o cancer, kung wala kang critical illness insurance, saan kukunin ang pampa-ospital at pang-maintenance mo? O sabihin natin hindi naman malubhang sakit, pero nagkaroon ka ng karamdaman at kailangan mong magpagamot. Kung wala kang health card, baka maubos ang savings nyo at baka makapangutang pa. Mahalaga ang insurance dahil ito ang magbibigay ng income protection sa iyo at sa pamilya mo sakaling may mangyari na hindi inaasahan. Sabi nga nila, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. After laying the foundation, ang susunod naman na kailangang i-construct ay yung walls o haligi ng bahay. Sa financial planning, ito ang emergency fund. Ito ang magiging sandalan natin sakaling magkaroon ng mga unexpected events and expenses sa tahanan. Halimbawa, nawala ng trabaho si breadwinner. Pag meron kang emergency fund, kahit papano, maitatawid nyo pa rin ang living expenses and essential needs nyo at makakapagbayad pa din kayo ng bills. Sa ating financial home, ang first layer ng wall ay ang pagkakaroon ng emergency fund na at least 3 to 6 months worth of living expenses. Yung second layer naman ay ang pagkakaroon ng sinking funds para sa mga irregular expenses kagaya ng insurances, at tuition fees, at special occasions. At yung third layer naman ay ang pagkakaroon ng mas malaking emergency fund for other unexpected expenses kagaya ng medical emergencies, home or car repair, or for prolonged unemployment ng breadwinner. Paano kung inabot ng 10 months bago nakahanap ng bagong trabaho? Malaking tulong ang pagkakaroon ng emergency fund. The bigger the wall or your emergency fund, the more you'll feel secure in times of emergencies. Okay, so may foundation na, may walls na, at ngayon naman ay maglalagay na tayo ng ceiling. 
At dito sa ating financial home, ito yung mga financial goals natin. Kagaya ng retirement fund, college fund para sa mga anak, Build your own house or a bigger house, buy a new car or a bigger car, travel with the family, at kung ano-ano pa. Isama na din natin dito ang estate planning o kung paano natin ipapasa sa ating mga anak ang ating mga naipundar na assets. Dapat pinaghahandaan ito dahil kung hindi, pwedeng maging cost pa ito ng away o tampuhan ng iyong mga anak pagdating ng araw. Dito sa financial goals, kanya-kanya tayo dito dahil magkakaiba naman ang mga pangarap natin sa buhay. Maganda kung ililista mo lahat ng dreams and goals mo at isama mo na din yung target amount at date para may idea ka kung gaano kalaki at katagal ang dapat mong pag-ipunan. I suggest that you start saving for your retirement fund as soon as you receive your first salary. Alam mo kung bakit? Kasi mas maliit ang amount na kailangan mong itabi pag maaga kang nagsimulang mag-ipon para sa retirement fund. Let me give you an example. May tatlong magkakaibigan, sina Ana, Karen, at Nina. Lahat sila ay 30 years old. Kunwari lang, napanood nila ang isang financial literacy video ni Pinay Investor sa YouTube at na-inspire sila na magsimulang mag-ipon challenge. Kaya lang, si Ana lang ang nagsimulang mag-ipon. She started saving 5,000 pesos per month or 60,000 pesos per year when she was 30 years old until she turned 59. Si Karen naman, may ibang priorities, kaya nagpagsimula lang siyang mag-ipon para sa kanyang retirement fund nung 40 years old na siya. Good timing ito para sa kanya dahil na-promote na siya sa trabaho at kaya niya nang mag-ipon ng 10,000 pesos per month, doble ng iniipon ni Ana. Si Nina ang big time. Nag-boom ang business nung 45 years old siya, kaya sabi niya magsisave siya ng 20,000 pesos per month para sa retirement. So si Ana nakapag-save ng 5,000 pesos per month consistently for 30 years. Si Karen naman nakapag-save ng 10,000 pesos per month consistently for 20 years. At si Nina nakapag-save ng 20,000 pesos per month consistently for 15 years. Mas maikli yung taon ng pinag-save niya pero mas malaki naman ang hiniipon niya per month. Magkano kaya ang total amount na naipon nila? Si Ana nakaipon ng 1.8 million pesos sa loob ng 30 years. Si Karen nakaipon ng 2.4 million pesos in 20 years. At si Nina naman nakaipon ng 3.6 million pesos sa loob lang ng 15 years. Pero ang tanong, sino kaya sa kanilang tatlo ang may pinakamalaking makukuha pag nag-retire sila ng 60 years old? Sige nga, type nyo nga sa comments kung sino ang hula nyo. Let's assume na inilagay nila ang kanilang ipon sa isang investment product na kumikita ng 10% returns per year at nagko-compound ang interest. Ano ba ang compound interest? Compound interest is the interest that you earn on interest. Ibig sabihin, tumutubo na yung investment capital mo, tumutubo pa yung interest nito. Nagpapatong-patong yung tubo kaya lalong lumalaki ang investment. Tingnan nga natin kung magkano ang naging total savings nila Ana, Karen at Nina pag nakompute na ang compounded interest. Yung kay Nina, yung ipon niya na 3.6 million naging 8,387,935 pesos. Grabe no, ganun pala ang compound interest. Yung kay Karen naman, yung naipon niya na 2.4 million, naging 7 million, 560,300 pesos. Not bad din, di ba? E magkano naman kaya yung kay Ana na 5,000 per month lang ang sinisave for 30 long years? Drum roll please! Tumataginting na 9,451,037 pesos ang total na naipon at tinubo ng retirement fund ni Ana. Grabe! Ang laki, di ba? And this is exactly the reason why you should save early. Sabi nga ni Albert Einstein, Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. And it doesn't only work for your retirement fund. You can also do this for your children's education fund and other financial goals. Remember, the earlier you save, the better. Okay, so tapos na tayo sa foundation, walls, at ceiling. Ngayon naman ay ilalagay na natin yung roof o bubong ng ating bahay. At dito sa ating financial home, ito ang investments. 
This is where you focus on wealth building kasi ito ang makakatulong sa iyo para ma-achieve yung mga financial goals mo. Yes, you need to work hard, but you also need to work smart. And you can do this by putting your hard-earned money in good investments. Sabi nga ni Robert Kiyosaki, Don't just work for money. Make your money work for you too. Why? Because the more your money works for you, the less you have to work for money. So saan ka ba pwede mag-invest? Pwede sa real estate, stock market, mutual funds, UITF, bonds, co-op, SSS Flexi Fund, Pag-ibig MP2, at marami pang iba. Pwede ka din magtayo ng sarili mong business. At kung malakas naman ang loob mo, pwede ka din mag-invest sa cryptocurrency. All these are available in the market at maraming resources online kung paano mag-invest. Pero ang pinaka-importante sa lahat is to invest in yourself first. Do your research. Learn as much as you can about the investments that you are interested in. Know your risk appetite, kung aggressive ka ba o conservative. Magkano ba ang kaya mong i-invest and how long will you invest it? Para saan ba ang mga investments mo? Kaya nga dapat at this point na isulat mo na ng malinaw ang iyong financial goals. At dito sa ating financial house, hinuli natin yung bubong sa taas kasi dapat meron na muna tayong matibay na foundation dito sa baba para in case na lumindol o pumagyo ng malakas, hindi basta-basta masisira ang bahay mo. Lalo na kung ikaw ang breadwinner. Importante na meron kang sapat na insurance protection bago ka pumasok sa mga risky investments. Yung iba, may emergency fund pero usually hindi sapat. Yung iba naman, may HMO o health card pero walang critical illness at life insurance. Yung iba, may life insurance pero walang HMO at critical illness coverage. Remember the ifs of life? Paano pag lumindol? Pwedeng mag ang bahay mo. At buti kung bahay lang. E paano kung ikaw mismo? Paano kung may nangyari sa'yo? Paano yung pamilya mo? At paano yung iba pang umaasa sa'yo? Baka lahat ng investments mo sa taas, ibenta mo kahit lugi dahil wala kang sapat na pundasyon sa baba, wala kang insurance, o hindi ganun katibay ang haligi ng bahay, wala kang sapat na emergency fund. You might end up selling or liquidating your assets to fill this gap. So how do you build your financial home? Do you build it from the ground up? Or do you start first with the roof? I suggest that you build your financial house with proper financial planning. Magkakaiba man ang laki at design ng house na gusto natin, magkakaiba man ang mga pangarap natin sa bahay at sa buhay, it all boils down to your cash flow management. How much money do you earn? How much money do you save? Do you know where your money is going? If not, then start budgeting. If you've got this far sa video na to, I believe you're off to a good start with your financial plan. But please, don't stop here. Keep learning. Continue educating yourself. Kasi sabi nga ni Benjamin Franklin, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Above all, huwag nating kakalimutang isama si Lord sa ating mga plano. Dahil sabi nga sa Proverbs 16.9, We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. Unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. And Jesus said, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. So, ask the Lord to bless your plans and you will be successful in carrying them out. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Sana ay may natutunan kayo sa video na to and I invite you to sign up to my email list sa thepinainvestor.com slash freebies kasi doon ako madalas mag-send ng mga tips, freebies, and personal emails para ikaw ang unang makakaalam pag meron akong bagong kwento. And I hope you can also share this video to your friends, baka makatulong din sa kanila. Thank you so much for watching and may the Lord bless all your plans in Jesus' name. To God be all the glory.